crap. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Hey guys, it's MJ and welcome back to Pet Adventures again. So today is not necessarily a very happy video per se, but it's not exactly a uh, terrible video. I don't know, it's, it's hard to really say, but for me it's technically not that great. Um, but I did have to tell you guys about this little story and kind of what's been going on. Um, for the past week. So if you attended my live stream, my very last live stream, um, you guys know I do videos every Wednesdays and Saturdays now. Today is Saturday, um, but I did make a uh, live stream for Wednesday. If you attended my live stream on Wednesday, then you will get like slightly bonus content that you will probably hear. Like if I'm about to make a certain video, if you attend my live streams very frequently, um, you'll know that um, like you'll get uh, information about future videos that I will be making um, before they actually come out. So if you ever want to hear about what I'm doing or what I'm up to prior before uh, the next video is, is to come up, um, you can always watch my live streams. Sorry, I don't know how to talk today, I just don't. But anyways, if you attended my last live stream, you will know that my mouse, my two-year-old mouse, Brownie, you guys all know Brownie, um, actually ended up getting respiratory infection. He got upper respiratory infection. So if you're not familiar about this, mice and rats are very prone to getting respiratory infection. It's got a lot to do with this area here. Lungs just start collapsing and a lot of this is just done uh, through too much dust in the bedding. Um, basically, you know, they start sneezing, they start gasping for air, their eyes get watery, and all these things did happen to Brownie. So I thought I would kind of just uh, share his little journey, his little battle that's been going on and kind of update you guys on what's been happening with Brownie due to this whole respiratory infection. I thought I would show you guys the whole journey. Um, and, you know, I still... Sorry. He's distracting me, my rat back there, because he's bruxing. So basically, I noticed that Brownie got respiratory infection only, like, I want to say three or four days ago. And he has been getting treated for about about three days so yeah around three or four days I noticed that he had respiratory infection I went to go check on him in his cage and he was breathing really 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 hard he started uh, gasping for air like gaping his mouth open and constantly gasping for air so and uh, like I said, his eyes were very watery and he just did not look good. I think I might have noticed that things were going on with him before and I told myself, oh, he's going to be fine and I waited a little bit too late. I mean, I don't want to say late to the point of where he's, you know, not going to be okay because I think he actually might, but um, not going that far just yet. I noticed that he got it... Uh, after I noticed that like he was gaping and gasping for air. So after that, I wanted to book a vet visit. Basically, that was becoming an issue. I don't want to go into detail too much, but I was having a hard time getting to that vet visit. It was a bit of a mission and I wanted a emergency vet visit. Like I wanted to literally make an appointment the very next day and the appointment was easy, but trying to get to that vet's office was a whole nother thing. So as you can imagine, um, you know, I went to work the very next day after I found out that Brownie had um, respiratory infection and <laughs> the entire time I went to work, I literally was just dead silent. I didn't want to do customer service or anything. I was just literally like falling apart. 
Um, like I know it sounds crazy, but this this mouse means a lot to me because I can't explain it, but he just means a whole lot to me. I, I've got very attached over this one mouse just as much as I would my rats and I was just devastated that this happened and I also blamed myself a lot for what was happening because I knew that he might be having respiratory issues and I chose to ignore it the first time I saw it and I didn't book a vet visit and I was afraid that he, it was just going to be too late. So let me just go back a little bit. When I realized that Brownie um, got respiratory infection, I immediately put him into a critter trail, uh, temporarily of course, because he is basically being hospitalized. Um, I put him in a critter trail, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, cage, and I just did that strictly with fleece. I did not put any care fresh bedding in there, it was strictly fleece. Um, just with food and his water bottle and so after that the next day I went to work and like I said I was depressed the whole day I was I was actually crying at work I was trying to make sure people didn't see me but I literally cried in like front of one of my bosses luckily she she very very much sympathized you know and she said that she had had a mouse respiratory infection so I knew I could kind of talk to her about that and then when I got home on that day I came back to Brownie actually looking really better um, I realized that I guess after I put him in a more ventilated cage uh, with just fleece, I realized that that seemed to help his respiratory issues a lot. But even though I knew some of his symptoms were gone, like he wasn't gasping for air anymore or gaping um, his mouth open or anything like that, even though that stopped, I still told myself I am not going to ignore this. Uh, I still heard a lot of clicking when he would breathe. I still heard some sneezing here and there. So I definitely would not put off the vet visit. So the very next morning I had to make the appointment because I could not make it on the day that I was at work and I was sad. I could not make it on that day because it was a Sunday and there was no vets opened. <laughs> just making things worse because I immediately wanted to get this mouse to the vet. I literally would have missed work for it but I, I there was no point because I couldn't even get an appointment on a Sunday. So I made the appointment as soon as they opened basically. I set an alarm because I knew exactly when they opened. I set an alarm to make a vet visit with them and I told them please 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 if you can have a walk-in appointment for me right now I need it. Um, I will pay extra, I don't care, whatever it has you have to do, I will do it. I just want to walk in appointment for today. And so I scheduled it really, really early and luckily they took Brownie right away. And then we made it to the vet visit. Now I do have some footage of me talking on that very morning before I took Brownie to the vet visit. So I'll quickly show that. Hey guys, so it's early in the morning. Um, so if you're watching this, I'm probably already making a video about Brownie getting respiratory infection. Um, I didn't record it now, but when I definitely found out he was getting respiratory problems, he was literally like gaping his mouth open and gasping like he couldn't breathe. Um, so that pretty much sucks. I literally was depressed the entire time I was at work yesterday. Didn't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> Didn't really want to do any kind of customer service. Like, I was just, I was falling apart. I was falling apart. Um, luckily, the progress has been better since I brought him to my room uh, in a little transport cage or whatever. Little critter trail, but uh, yeah. So, <laughs> Bugsy wants to get in the way, don't you? Yes, you do. So he's in this he's in this little critter trail right now. Look, he definitely wants to get out. <laughs> I know Bubba. He's in here though. And although he looks okay right now, trust me, he wasn't. I heard lots of clicking, lots and lots of clicking. And uh he also, like I said, was gaping a lot and stuff. Um, but like, like I also said, like I noticed that there was like a significant difference once I brought him to this. So I think it's because it's an open cage. So like the, there's, you know, there's an open barred cage, and also um, he's on fleece in there. 
and there's like my air conditioning in here so I think that's a big part of it look at this guy <laughs> what do you want anyways uh, we're gonna go to the vet and we'll see what he says hopefully things turn out pretty okay honestly all he needs to do is give me medication for a respiratory infection um, that's really all he needs to do uh, I don't even need him to like really check brownie I just I just need respiratory infection medicine but uh wish me luck so I don't know if you could tell there, but I was feeling better that I was able to make a vet visit, but at the same time I was still pretty upset about the fact that he got respiratory infection, more severe respiratory infection, basically because of me, because um, like I said, it wouldn't have been as severe if I had just taken him when I first saw the signs. And after that, when I got to the vet, I was supposed to film, but I forgot to. I was too wrapped up in just what the doctor was saying and I was too wrapped up in just I guess everything so I planned on filming I even took my camera to the vets but totally forgot to film that for you guys so I'm sorry but all in all I literally told the vet like I know my mouse has 100% respiratory infection I have studied this I have seen it time and time again on rats and mice in the pet stores that I've worked at and basically I just need you to give me the medication that you have available for respiratory infection so we did that and he gave me a little medicine, it's Batriol, it's an antibiotic um, and he just showed me the dosage and I started from there to start giving him the medicine. I was instructed to medicate Brownie twice a day so I am doing morning and night of the medicine and it's really not that hard to medicate the mice or the rats. I've done it time and time again at the pet stores and all in all that has just been really really easy. The hard part was trying to get my medication for him and trying to get a ride there and things like that. Over time I actually started noticing that Brownie is having less breathing issues. I noticed that the way he breathes is a lot um, more normal. I don't know how to explain it but the way his breathing was uh, even when he was like sleeping or something like that was very off and not normal for a mouse and now he seems to be kind of breathing in a slower pattern and a much more relaxed pattern which makes me happy. I no longer hear any clicking noises, any sneezing, there's no gasping, there's nothing. Uh, and this medicine that I am using that we used for the pets at the, the pet stores that I have worked at before, we've used this same medicine and I have never, like literally never seen it fail. This medicine always works. It works usually within three to four days. So I have a lot of high hopes about Brownie pulling through, but he would have not if I had not taken him to the vet. Now I probably know what you're thinking. Why would you go through all this trouble just for one little mouse, one little two-year-old mouse? And that's because number one, I feel like even though rats and mice are prone to respiratory infection, doesn't mean we should just accept that and move on. If it's treatable or if you can treat it in any way, I don't feel like we should neglect that. Also, why shorten a rodent or any animal's life uh, just because they're prone to something? We can get cancer, but does that mean we should not treat it or that we shouldn't try? It's the same basic thing. I also still can't promise that Brownie will still be living for a long time or that he'll even pull through, but I do have a lot of positivity about this whole situation. I'm very positive about it, and I really do think that he's going to pull through. And I just, I felt like if I could do something, then I should do it. It's not like I didn't have the money. I definitely have the money, and um, you know, I just really wanted to try whatever I could for this mouse. And if people want to call me crazy for going through all that trouble for one little mouse, then by all means call me crazy. I couldn't care less what you think of me. Um, in the end, this makes me happy, this makes my pet happy, and that makes my life a lot better. And now I don't have to live with the guilt that I didn't do anything to help my mouse. So yeah. 
call me crazy. And even if he doesn't pull through this, which I really hope he does, I'm going to be devastated if he doesn't, but even if he doesn't pull through this, I can at least tell myself that I tried and that will not make me fear, feel nearly as guilty. And one last thing I want to add is that if you have any kind of pet, always make sure that you will be able to take them to the vet before you even get that pet. So if you're a kid um, and you're old enough to get a job, I highly encourage that you get some kind of small job. You don't have to work in a big corporation job <laughs> to pay for the vets. You can just simply get a small retail job and get paid eight an hour and only work there about three to four times a week and that's enough to help you pay for an emergency vet visit for whatever animal you have whether it's a cat a dog um, a reptile you know a small animal whatever it is it's going to be enough to pay for a vet and if you're really really young and you can't get a job yet um, but you can take care of the pet just make sure that you discuss with your caregivers, your mom, your dad, whoever's taking care of you, discuss with them and flat out ask them, are you going to be able to take my pet to the vet in case anything happens in the future? Because this will prevent anything from happening to your animal in the future and I really would hate for you guys to go through that. I know it sucks for me to lose a pet when you know when I felt it makes you feel helpless and kind of guilty you know and um, you know I just I would hate to see that happen to you guys so always discuss with your parents if they're going to be able to take your animal to the vet every now and then if there's an emergency vet visit. That being said don't leave everything to your parents the only thing they need to do is provide the ride and the money for you um, but you should be able to be the one to find the right vet um, make an appointment, that kind of thing. Anyone can do that. So just keep that in mind. These animals are worth it no matter if they're tiny or big, no matter if they're scaly or furry. It doesn't matter. They all have lives. They all need to live it to their very fullest. And honestly, taking them to the vet is really the least you can do, if you think about it. It's not that crazy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't exactly super entertaining and like super happy, but I thought that you guys deserve to know. And I really kind of wanted to share Brownie's current little journey right now with you guys. I really hope that he'll pull through it. Um, if you guys can, I would love for you guys to do the hashtag on Instagram, uh, Save Brownie. I really, really would just love that. All you guys have to do is just hashtag Save Brownie, and you can post pictures of Brownie or pictures of pet adventures. Doesn't really matter, but it'd be really nice if you guys could do that for me. I think it'll be fun. You can even do it in the comments down below. And please just pray for him. He needs all the help he can get and he is the best mouse that anyone could ask for. Don't forget to hit that bell down below. It'll notify you every time I make a live stream or a Wednesday video or a Saturday video, whatever is going on in here. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up, especially if you love pets. And I will see you guys next time.